What is up guys, it is Nick. We are back for another week's um, patch notes and update stuff. As you can see by all the tabs open, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 tabs open. So I'm going to revert back to this every time just to make sure I know what I'm talking about uh, and keep myself organized here. Should be a decently long video. I'll try to save some of the fluff and stuff like that. Um, just to save you guys time, but let's get into this. We're going to start, I believe, here with Camus Sylvia. Uh, should be, pretty much, this is just the announcement that it's coming to PlayStation. Uh, it was a while ago. It was on the 28th, which was a couple days after I did the last update video. I believe the last update video was the 26th. But yeah, this is just a description of Camus Sylvia. Nothing special here to look at. It goes over all the different locations that you can go to in Cama. Uh, but overall, there's just pretty much, it just is telling you about Camus Sylvia. So, we can move on quickly from that. Obviously, that's just PS4. We've had Camus Sylvia on Xbox. This was the schedule maintenance notice. We don't need to go over that. Next, we have the Archer-related stuff. Last Champion of Sylvia, Archer, and Embrace the Wolf. That is the new stuff that came to PlayStation. Obviously, Archer. Uh, there's a trailer here if you want to watch that, but this is just about the basic stuff about the Archer, and then a simple class introduction going over five of the more prominent and simple spells with the crossbow. Moving on here is the Ascension for the Archer, which is a little bit different than the Awakenings for other classes, but this is just a slight overview, a couple Q&A type things lay out here and then five of the skills for Archer Ascension that you'd want to be using. Um, pretty simple, nothing too crazy there, but yes, we have two of the Archer things that they needed to get into the game, because we have, uh, we have crossplay now. So next is the crossplay special GM event. See, this is going fairly quickly. I got through the first three things really quick. Uh, but crossplay special events, we'll go into a little bit more detail here. So this is event number one is the PlayStation 4 Xbox One Arsha Brawl. And so this is taking place from Thursday, March 5th at 8.30 p.m., 10.30 p.m. Pacific to Friday, March 6th, 8.30 to 10.30. Or wait. Oh, this is okay. 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 So it's a two hour brawl. I, I thought it was going to be like, here's the start time and then here's the end time. But no, I'm an idiot. Um, so it's 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. Pacific. Um, and then... For Europe, it's 8.30 to 10.30 UDC. And then for Asia, it's March 6th, 1,800 to 2,000 hours. Uh, Grimmage Mean Time, plus 9. So, join CM Trent and CM Sherna in the Arsha Arena for some old school brawls. Each of our CMs will be a captain of their team. Trent for PlayStation and Sherna for Xbox. And pick two players from chat to join them in a series of one round 3v3 battles. Everyone who fights will leave with rewards. The event will be streamed, so make sure to tune in to Twitch and YouTube channels. On the Arsha Crossplay server, once the event starts, two GMs, one for PlayStation, one for Xbox, will ask people to send them a whisper. Send a whisper to the GM of your platform, and you will be entered into the queue of your platform's team. So essentially, yeah. And then all members of the winning team will get 35 to 45 advice of the Volks. Losing team, 25 to 35. Not a crazy event, but... We move on to Treasure Hunter, which runs Sunday, March 8th. I'm just going to say the Pacific time. Obviously, the other times are here, but I'm just going to say the Pacific time for the future. Okay, so Sunday, March 8th, 4 p.m. to nine or to March 9th at 4 p.m., so one day, 24 hours. GMs have dropped treasure chests around the seas of Black Desert World. Find them to get valuable items. Treasure chests can be found around locations marked in the picture. Find and interact with them to receive rewards. Uh, you need silver keys to open the chest. You can get them quite easily by fishing or buying them from the central market. To get some help with your underwater searches, you will be able to purchase Splat Fisher's clothes set seven days for one loyalty starting from March 4th until March 11th. I don't know if these are the only four, but there are four lo or four pictured here. Termian Beach, Olivia Coast, Ancado Inner Harbor, and Arahaza. Uh, you can obtain one of the following items below from the treasure chest of Valk's Cry times 30, Advice of the Valk's 35 to 45, Memory Fragments times 40, Shakatu Seal times 10, and Crone Stone times 50. Actually a pretty good uh, rewards out of those treasure chests as long as they're not too difficult to find. Moving on, we have event number 3, O slash X Quiz. This is March 11th to... 
I almost said two. Why did they all of a sudden change it to military time here? They changed it to military time for this event. Okay. Okay. Well, it's military times for the next event too, but I don't know why they switched it up halfway through their their event list here. But Wednesday, March 11th, 2030 p.m. to I don't know why they, they don't need the p.m. But 2030 to 2230 uh, Pacific time. The second edition of Black Desert OX quiz is here. GMs will be selecting one member from 30 different guilds to participate in the quiz and compete for prizes. Make sure to be there and become a hero of your guild. Apply for application via server chat and GMs will teleport you to the event location. Only one guild member can represent their guild. Rewards winning guild ancient Paturum summon scroll times three. Perfume of courage times two sent to every guild member. All participant guilds get one ancient Paturum summon scroll. Uh, re rewards will be sent March 18th. Next, we have event number four, Outlaws of Black Desert. So this is Thursday, March 12th from 2030 to 2230. Uh, take part in a water balloon serendine standoff between two GM teams. Two GMs will each summon 10 adventurers to join their teams. Take part in an epic water balloon fight. Each GM will be on horseback, and your team's task is to hit the opponent's GM with water balloons and throw them off their horse while protecting your GM at the same time. The team first throws the the team which first throws the opponent GM off the horse 10 times wins. So details you apply participation via server chat gms will teleport you so like anything else uh hitting a gm with a water balloon has 100 percent chance of throwing them off the horse you can only use water balloons adventures trying to use different items will remove from the island the team will have to continue with <laughs> that's just stupid you're just expecting i mean it should it'll be fine i'm sure but that's just stupid to expect like 10 20 random people to just follow these arbitrary rules and not use anything else by accident or on purpose I, I feel like that's just a little bit like to expecting too much out of people uh usage of water balloons will be blocked directly after the event ends and then removed from your inventory during the first maintenance after the event after one of the gms is thrown off the horse 10 times both teams will send out of the island the next two teams will be invited winning team gold bars 100 g two times for all members one times for all losing members Next, final event, event number five, kart racing, Sunday, March 15th, 4 p.m. to 6, they went back to regular time, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, we'll be bringing people to an undisclosed location to try our custom kart racing track. All you need to do is apply for participation and then wait, and then when it is your turn, we'll bring you to the start line. Pick up your carts, wait for the signal, uh, and then race your peers to the finish line. Glory awaits. So you apply via server chat. GMs will teleport you like anything else. GMs will teleport 20 adventurers to participate in the race. Once the race is over, participants will be sent back, and the next group of 20 will be teleported to the island. You can participate in the race only once. First place, book a combat and book a training skill 10 hours each. Other participants, participants get 3 hours each. Um, here are some extra rules. For the Arsha Brawls and the OX quiz, like I always do, I will link this page here. So if you want, you can come back to here, uh, go in there and read anything that I don't go over. Next is Luther Lutheragon's Calling. So let's find this tab. Lutheragon's Calling is here. Level up your archer. Is this actually a... It says PlayStation Xbox, but I feel like Xbox is not getting this event again. I mean, I have a level 56 archer. If I just get on my level 56 archer, do I get all these rewards? Uh, with the arrival of archer, Cam and Sylvia needs you at your best and rewards you for your efforts. There are bonuses for reaching levels required to explore Cam and Sylvia. For, e for Xbox users, if you not obtain the rewards from the archer level up event during its period, you'll be able to get them now. Don't actually remember if I got them or not probably should log on and figure that out but the event period is after the maintenance on the 4th which is today and before the march 18th maintenance so you only have two weeks to get them to level 58 not too bad but two weeks get them to level 58 the rewards are as followed here i think these are some of the worse rewards compared to some of the other classes that we had they're not terrible there's probably somewhere around 200 mil i think worse of loot here that you get maybe depends on what you get out of your light special gifts i guess but somewhere around 200 mil which is not bad at all um that's about it though that's 
that's that's this one is that we do have a level up event for Archer. So next we have the changes due to daylight savings time. So these are the world boss time changes. Um, and yeah, these are what they're changing to. So 6 a.m. and then 3, 4, 7, 15, 8, and 10 p.m. All, spe all Pacific time during the weekdays. Uh, and then the weekends, you get the 10 a.m., you get the noon, 1, 2, 4, 7, 15, and 9, 15 p.m. Um, it's kind of nice that they worked with daylight saving times. They moved them all an hour earlier to help... Um, uh, help with the time change and uh, people being on ply playing schedules to go with the world bosses. Next, here is the world boss timetable overall. So this is great. I love that they put this together. Actually, no, I will probably go back and save this. Um, so here are all the times. Pacific Standard, UDC, and Grimmage Mean Time Plus 9, so Asia, uh, of when everything spawns each day. Uh, Monday through Sunday, so that is really cool. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I like that they put it into a picture form. Nice and easy, really good for people with Discord servers. I don't have one for Black Desert, but like like guilds and stuff like that who have Discord servers, great for a channel. You can just pop these in there and, and leave them. Uh, so that's really good. I love when, uh, when companies do this. It, it doesn't take much time. Probably took them... I don't know, probably took a guy that works at Pearl Abyss four minutes. Uh, he color-coded them, so maybe seven minutes in XL, and it's just a huge help to everybody who plays the game. Um, I don't do a whole lot with world bosses. I probably should get back into it, but this would be awesome if I was into world bosses. So moving on, Muramacher Destroyer Often Awakens. So... Adventurers, a new world boss has awoken deep in the Muramak Temple. Muramak Destroyer often is an ancient... So, hold on, I'll go back here real quick. So you can see often 4 p.m. on Mondays is, is the only time... You, okay, 4 p.m. on Mondays, 9 p.m. on Fridays, and 1 p.m. on Saturday... Or 1 p.m. on Sunday? Is that really all he spawns? That's not very often. Um... There are two ways to discover Muramak Destroyer Often. Guild boss, Muramak Destroyer Often, Watcher Often Tet appears as a guild boss and can be picked up through the repeatable guild quest boss subjugation watcher of the Muramak Ruins. World boss, Muramak Destroyer Often also appears as a world boss and will be summoned at set times. You can find Often spawn times below. So that's what we were just looking at. Uh, both often spawn in different locations, but they are both in the area of Muramak Forest. Taking down the Destroyer often, the ultimate goal in fighting the Muramak Destroyer often, is to take out the Watcher often Tet inside. During the fight, Watcher often Tet will be protected by a magic shield, so you will need to weaken the first that first before taking out Watcher often Tet. There are three different ways to achieve this goal. Destroy the Roots. I feel I'll read them. Uh, method one, destroy one root. Uh, for this method to work, you are going to need a lot of damage and coordination. First, you get the Watcher off in Tet to dismount the Destroyer by destroying one root. Then you will need to switch to math, Match Locks in order to destroy the shield before Watcher off in Tet's HP drops to 70%. If the shield is broken, Watcher off in Tet will not get back inside the Destroyer, meaning you will you can finish uh, you can then finish him off without worrying about the Destroyer. Destroyer, destroy two roots. Uh, similar to method one, you will need to destroy the first root to make Watcher off and Tet leave Destroyer. Then you will attack the Watcher off and Tet until his HP reaches 70, at which point it will remount the Destroyer. Then you will need to destroy another root and make the Watcher off and Tet come out. One more time from there, you can attack it until Watcher off and Tet reboards the Destroyer at 30%. As two roots have been destroyed, the Destroyer will be unable to draw enough energy to bring the shield back, so you can focus Destroyer to take out the off and Tet and Destroyer. Method 3, destroy the three roots. So this method is, is identical to message 2, but once often Tet reboards the destroyer at 30%, you can focus on the remaining root to make often Tet unmount destroyer one more time. You will be able to take him out relatively quickly from there. <sighs> Muramak destroyer often, often attack patterns. Sweep the front. I'm not going to read these description, but sweep the front. Poison gas, rumbling earth, ground explosion, shining spear, meteor strike. Uh, so Watcher, Often Tet, Attack Patterns, Clones, Teleport, Slam, Heavy Stomp, Shining Spear, Energy Eruption, Rewards. 
So with Muramok Destroyer often, there are three ways to obtain rewards. The first is similar to other world bosses where you can just pick up items after Watcher often Tet has been defeated. Rewards here are generally distributed based on the amount of damage dealt, but anyone who deals damage will be able to get something from the fight. The second method is to be one of the top 30 adventurers that help to destroy the root of Muramok Destroyer often. These 30 adventurers will find extra rewards when they come to the loot mods to loot the monster. The third method is to be one of the top three adventures that help to destroy often shield. This method is trickier to be a part of since destroying the shield requires a match lock, but getting rewards for this world block is incredibly worthwhile. The rarest item you can get from defeating Muramok Shra often, the often tet light sealed weapon. Uh, you can get this by receiving and obtaining often light sealed weapon box. This weapon box has lower accuracy than a Kazarka weapon, but has higher AP. Also has an additional plus two critical hit compared to Kazarka weapons, plus one attack slash casting speed. Possible item drops from defeating him. Uh, light, the, the box. Uh, Voltar Eclipsed Belt, Jin Magic Crystal, Cobelinus, one ma- Okay, then a bunch of magical crystals, Forest Fury, Lemuria Armor, Black Stones, and more. Possible item drops from destroying the roots. Offen's Tendril, Offen Tet's Light Fragment. Possible item drops when Offen Shield is destroyed. All of that, pretty much the same as this, plus Degraded Wood Fragment. That you should always try to have knowledge of world bosses to give you the best chance of getting reward, great rewards, as well as knowing how low Offen's HP is. To get knowledge on Offen Tet, you will need to talk to Anne Belief at the top of the Old Wisdom Tree. In order to talk to her, you must have at least seven entrances in the Camasylvia Entrance Adventure Journal 1. Okay, so moving on, let me take a quick sip of water here. Okay, so moving on, we have the advent of crossplay. Um, this is just a crossplay event. First event, world boss drop increases. So world bosses seem to be carrying their gear with them more often during the event period, which means that the chances for world boss gear drops have been doubled. Take on the world boss and stake your claim to some of the most powerful pieces of equipment. It's just increased to weapon drop boxes which is really nice because there's like no kudum dandelion or nova weapon boxes up, or not weapon boxes but weapons up so this is great because i would love to upgrade my scythe to dandelion so hopefully more of those spawn and we can we can get that going event two scorching hot time to celebrate the launch of the olivia server for 24 hours 200% XP and 30% skill. Take advantage of the hot time event and push your limits. Once the event is over, all servers will return to normal. The Olivia server will go back to 100% and skill XP plus 30%. Event 3, the Golden Age of Crossplay. Event details. With the advent of crossplay comes gold. During the event, you can find golden items that you can sell for silver. These items can be sold for 5 million each, so make sure you find as many as you can. Golden dagger, golden backpack, golden cola canth. So, daggers, monsters, gathering is backpack, and fishing is colacanth. So, that is that. We're about halfway through, guys, so we're getting there. Special events for new slash returning players. So, here is all sorts of the new events. Let's go into them. So, first we have the Olivia server. We already went over that. We don't need to go over that again. Cliff's equipment support. The great Captain Cliff is offering access to his armory for those adventurers who prove themselves on the battlefield. New and returning players will be able to accept... Why did I say it like that? Accept quests from Cliff at the Western Guard Camp. And by completing the three objectives, you have proven yourself worthy of handling Cliff's weapons. Once the objective has been complete, you'll be able to open the weapon box on your character and get weapons for the class you open them on. Uh, new and returning adventure log rewards. So, I think one of these is that yeah here we go so special event login rewards we'll get into that in just a minute so we won't go for that now glossary for new users i'm there's that i don't really think i need to go over that anybody who's watching this video i think we all know what all that is so black desert xbox uh xbox first anniversary gift adventures to celebrate the first year anniversary of xbox we have prepared some special gifts for our adventurers to help our adventurers grow and become stronger we'll be sending advice of the volks plus 100 interesting uh and uh chronestone times 100 interesting for the first year anniversary that's an interesting gift don't know what much to say about that pretty decent interesting though 
for people like me that don't love to upgrade their own crap, this really doesn't do a whole lot for me, but it's a really, it's a pretty decent gift. Okay, so next, a call to arms. So this was what it was talking about earlier with good old Cliff. So, Cliff, a veteran of the battlefield and once a driving force against Calpheon, wants to push new adventures and reinvigorate returning adventures. That is why he's decided to reward new and returning adventurers who complete the, this his quest with a weapon that bears his name. So, event details... Obviously, Cliff's main weapon, plus 15, sub, plus 15, and awakening, plus 15. So, Cliff's weapon quests are only available for new slash... So, everybody, right? I mean, unless it means, like, oh, you didn't play for a really long time, so now you're a return... Like, it, that can't possibly be it. Can't possibly... I can't take that seriously if I can't do it because I've been regularly playing the game. It's gotta mean everyone. I mean... I will be spooked if they do not let me do it because I've been playing the game. But let's get into this. So, quest details. So, level 55 and lower, 56 and higher have different things that they have to do. So, I'm going to be on my Sork if I do this. So, I'll be level 60. And so, I will have to do the second part. But let's go into this. So, if you're lower, I'll do the lowers first and then we'll do the uppers. After completing each of these, you will get to choose one of the weapons, sub-weapon, or awakening, plus 15. So, obviously, you can go from there. I mean, you, you just pick them in order. Just pick main, sub, and then awakening. Just do it in that order. Whatever. Point is, for under level 55, you need to defeat 150 manches, 100 catfishmen, and then 100 skeletons. That's really easy. Easy peasy simple. If you're 56 and higher, you get to have fun by defeating three bosses. You need to defeat Awakened Red Nose, Awakened Gaeth, and Awakened Beg. So, I will have a video out on this, hopefully, maybe today or tomorrow. I don't know what day it'll come out on. But what a, in the next day or two, if I'm able to do this, I will have a video out on it. Um, we'll try to do all three of the bosses for me on my Sork and get all the weapons and stuff. So, moving on, special notes on Cliff weapons cliff weapons not only bear his name okay we already know that they can be enhanced to tet and have higher chances to, for successful enhancement nice however cliff understands that there will come a time when you outgrow his weapons so cliff has struck a deal with miguel aries in western guard camp so that you can exchange cliff's weapons for gold interesting um however while miguel aries trusts cliff and is loyal he doesn't want regular weapons he wants enhanced so you got to have pry duo try or tet i don't know why they don't have pen but the reward, so Pry, you get 100G times 3. Duo, you get 100G times 5 and 1 1KG times 1. For Try, you get 1KG times 3. And for Tet, you get 1KG times 7. So that is really nice. One thing that I, well, hold on. I will, let's let's go over this because it, it, it goes over it down here at the bottom. So, New adventurers refers to accounts that logged in within 30 days, 720 hours after initial login to the game. Returning adventurers refers to accounts that did not log in for more than 30 days before coming back. So I have to, I'm not, am I really considered a new adventurer? This can't, if I'm not able to do this, I will lose my mind. But please note that the Cliff Awakening plus 15 box cannot be opened by Shy. That is something to note. Other than that, that is all for this if it's easy to get it to like tet i will probably be using the awakening and the sub weapon i probably won't use the main weapon over my kazarka try but the other stuff probably uh moving on special login event so here are our logins so we have a i think this is just a three week event so three week event we have weeks one and two are the enhancement help so Interesting things here, I'll go over, I'm just going to go over the interesting things, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't matter, but we have the fine accessory box at day 7, which is really nice, and we have the advice of the Valk times, or er, plus 60, so that's really nice as well, you also get 15 Valk's cries for logging in, but the uh, fine accessory box and the advice of the Valk, so that's, that's the two main things. Next we have the pearl items, uh, the, or well, week 3 is pearl items. Here, uh, inventory expansion plus 8 is pretty nice. Value pack for 20 days and secret book of old moon for 20 days. Golden bell, I guess, is fine. 
it just means golden bells will be ringing forever uh new or returning or i guess new login event for all oh this is all adventures this is a special login and then this is our new like monthly login reward so we'll be able to get two fine accessory boxes this month which is pretty nice um the enhancement help kit times one or two times one that's really nice other than that those are probably the two main things the advice of the volks is always nice but these are the main two things uh, nothing too important there. Guys, we're getting there. We're three away. Three away. This is the Pearl Shop update, so let's get into this. Who? How, how far are we in this? We're in 25 minutes. I think we can keep this under 35 minutes. So, let's get into this. These are the new events. Team Green Bundle, Team Blue Bundle. I believe these are the same as the bundles that we got before that were like, no, 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 no. We had Team Green and Team Blue Bundles last week for one loyalty, but these aren't the same. Um, because these are actual, like, sets. There's no way that this is... This is kind of interesting, though. This gives you four outfits uh, for a really discounted price, which means you could probably, if you're into kind of pay-to-win, I guess, you can... Um, what am I trying to say? You can... I'm an idiot. What am I trying to say? You can, uh, you can buy these and then sell them on the marketplace, because there's four of them. Moving on, event, another life pack. So this allows you to transfer stuff over to another character. Combat skill XP transfer token, main weapon exchange, sub weapon exchange, awakening weapon exchange, and premium box. Interesting. I don't know. I'll have to look into it because... Oh, here, I'll just read it right here. So, allows you to exchange combat XP and skill XP... With another character in your family, you cannot use this item if the characters on both ends and you receiving are equipped with awakening weapons at the same time or has not reached level 50. Even if a character reaches level 56, awakening quest must be completed in order to be awakened and be able to equip an awakening weapon. This item cannot be used on a character of the newest class within 90 days of the class release. Expires 90 days. So you can't use it on um, Valkyrie, Konoichi, or Archer. I, what my question here is, is like, okay, so I have my level 56 archer, okay? What if I never want to play on my level 56 archer? Can I move all that experience to my Sork? I know it probably wouldn't even equate to like half a level, but still something interesting if you were never going to play on a character again. Uh, there's the exchanges again. You can buy them separately. Um, you'll pay 1,900 pearls extra to buy these separately from each other, but if you only want one, obviously, there you go. Uh, weapon exchange, coupon, permanent sale, exchange in other classes, main. Obviously, you guys know. I mean, there's not too much to that. But it's in the title. Um, Luthergon, uh, Luth Luthergon pack uh, is on sale, 5600 There's all the stuff. You get two different wolves. Uh, you get the archer set. And then a bunch of different stuff to help you level up your archer, essentially. And then a discount coupon. So that if you don't like this premium outfit set for the archer, you can get another one. Unleash pack. So similar to the Lutheragon pack, the Unleash pack has both wolves, an event premium box, whew, and then a bunch of stuff to help you with your archer. Essentially, it's essentially just a bunch of stuff to help you with the archer. I mean, you can use it on any character, but it's essentially to help you get going on an archer. Next, we have the Wolf Trio pack. Twenty five hundred. I might actually pick this up because I want to get my wolves leveled up, and I do have one wolf already uh we'll move on though inventory expansion that's 50 percent off excited rookie pack that's 54 percent off another thing help someone get started in the game uh, a little bit of a head start jump start excited returners pack get you back into the game give you like 15 days essentially well 30 with the value pack but give you like 30 ish days 15 to 30 ish days to get back into the game see if you uh, still like it splat fishers close set like they said on sale for one loyalty Here's the Team Green versus Team Blue sale. All of these outfits are on sale 20% off. Weight limit increase is 20% off. Character slot expansion is 50% off. Life skill EXP transfer token, 1760. Obviously, you guys know what that means. Here are the new things. Now, they have this labeled as Xbox and PlayStation. This was already on Xbox, but overall, a lot of these will be new-ish new ish to each console so here are all look at all the new archer stuff right here just absolutely insane i'm not gonna read all of these 
because there's just way too much. Each class essentially got something new. For my Sork, though, we did get Kiss Leave Premium Set and Kavaro Classic Set, so I will have to take a look at those for my Sork and see if those are things I want to pick up. Nothing has really caught my eye that I want more than with the outfit that I have on my Sork now, but uh, always keeping an eye out. There were some when I initially looked at all the sets that could possibly come out. There were some that I liked more, so I'm waiting on those. I don't know when they'll come out, but hey, whatever. Storage Expansion is on sale, I believe, or this is just new. Oh, uh, this is just new. So, increase the slots by X amount for X amount of pearls. Pets. So, we have new pets. We have Naughty Dog, Brown Creamy Puppy, Barshin Dog, and Scarlet Macaw. Mounts. We have a new Donkey Gear set and a Kavara Horse set. Interior. A bunch of spring stuff, which is cool because it's, beca it's close to becoming spring. I can't believe it's already March. Uh, workers lodge, 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 oh my gosh, can I learn how to talk? Lodging, plus one expansion coupon, uh, 200 pearls, stable, plus one is 300, and loyalty, new loyalty stuff. The classes that didn't have an Asher or Asher uh, guard outfit got those. Extra skill EXP coupons, Peel of Fay, Naughty Dog, I believe that was just an Xbox, and then expansion storage. Whew, two more free play days, discounts, and more. All packages are 50% off. I don't know if this is also on the PC, because I'd like to give this a try on PC, but um, I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to buy it on PC unless it's discounted. I don't know. I do want to give it a try on PC, though, because I've been playing some games on PC more recently, kind of having fun on PC. But let me get to the point of this. Xbox Silver members get one week of free-to-play, March 3rd to the March 10th. Um, and then Xbox Gold members get two weeks of free play, which is March 3rd to the March 17th. So that's actually go live yesterday, free-to-play. Interesting. Oh, I guess the servers were down, so you had to download it, and then it's technically free-to-play today. 20% uh, Pearl discount. All Xbox accounts can enjoy a 20% discount for the following period, 2nd to the 17th. There are, has never been a better time to jump into the world of Black Desert. Okay. Um, authors Offers are only valid in North America and Europe. Uh, free to play days. PlayStation Store discount. All game packages. 50% um, off for PSN for PS Plus and 25% off for PSN viewer. Just regular PSN users. I don't know why that like messed me up in my head. but um, And then PS Plus is 20%. PSN is 10% on Pearl Box sale. Um, is it just Pearl Boxes? Uh, yeah, I guess it's just, per well, I think Xbox is the Pearl Shop, and then PlayStation is the Pearl Boxes. Moving on, here we go. This is the final thing. Patch Notes. Adventure as one now with crossplay. So, let's get into this. This is the nitty gritty. You can see we got a decent amount of chunk of stuff here to go over, so let's hop right into it. Chat. Players will be able to communicate with each other regardless of the platform as long as they are in the same server group. Guilds. Guilds can recruit players from either platform. Unfortunately, at this time, we are unable to provide voice support through in-game means for PlayStation users. However, text chat will be combined for Guilds users so that users will be able to message each other. Central Market, as mentioned in the previous notice. Yeah, Central Market has been combined and they went off the higher of the two markets. Name changes, as mentioned in a previous notice, name changes will occur to make sure the players have unique identities in game. This process can be found in the um, change document. We went over that last week. Check out last week's video uh, if you're interested. Uh, Node War, Conquest War, they suspended that until the 8th. We went over that last year. Here are the class play server lists. I'm not going to read all those. Um, but yeah, those are the crossplay server. Obviously, the ones in parentheses are limited to just that console. So Florin 1, Florin 2 is Xbox only, and Etheria 1 and Etheria 2 are PlayStation only. Ultra Blood and Post-Party Recruitment. Unfortunately, we need to disable Ultra Blood and Post-Party Recruitment for an unspecified period of time. We will be taking this time to take a look at Ultra Blood and consider applying some minor changes to the mode. New classes. So, obviously, PlayStation needed to get Archer because we've had them on xbox Camus Sylvia, obviously they needed to get comma sylvia because we've had that on xbox we've gone all over all this because it's all stuff that we um all the other tabs that i have open often tet we went over that time changes we went over that olivia server we went over that old moon sky balloon 
Take the Skies as the air balloon between Calfian and Garana is now open. The balloon transport costs one black stone, either armor or weapon, to purchase a token, which you can then give to a dwarf who is in charge of the balloon. Up to two Avengers can jump in the balloon at a time, and once it arrives at destination, will, you will automatically disembark. Ventures who disconnect during the ride will find themselves plummeting to the ground upon re-entry. Although crystals will not be destroyed, we strongly recommend staying seated throughout. Combat Dummies since their introduction to Black Desert, we have noticed that there is a significant performance drop when entering or exiting cities through entrances located next to the dummies. The dro this drop is heavily connected co to the concentration of players in one spot in popular areas. To help reduce these performance issues in towns and cities, we will be reducing the number of training dummies available in each town by around 50%. Woo! PlayStation! <laughs> it's just... I don't know. It, it's weird that they went to cross-play before they figured out how to stabilize PlayStation. I mean, literally all these decreases that they do is because PlayStation can't handle it. And because PlayStation can't handle it, it really kind of ruins a lot of things for Xbox players. I mean, not that having 50% less, but it's going to suck because now there's going to be more people trying to train. So it's going to suck when you log on and there's just not one and you have to run to a whole other city and hope that there's enough training dummies there. But I digress. Item changes. Fairies will be receiving some attention in this update. The probability of attaining a brilliant fairy has been increased. In tandem with this change, we will also be reducing the amount of experience required to level up a brilliant fairy by around 50%. These changes will allow players to level up and obtain higher level fairies with more ease. Adventurers who have a brilliant fairy, Layla, may see the, their EXP exceeding 100%. You will then uh be able to go to the next level using the growth mechanic through the use of honey wine or green grade upgrade cliffs weapons have also been added we already went over that the amount of crone stones that can be increased through outfit extraction has also been increased this will also means that the maximum upper prices of pearl outfits at, on the central market ha Ooh, has also been increased interesting ui changes you can now repeatedly enhance with the following magical black stones nice good that's nice nice quality of life change for people general character changes the first of the character changes comes as a minor visual upgrade for the default faces of ninja and konoichi there will be no changes made to your current ninjas and konoichis but if you like these new defaults we are sending an appearance change coupon to all adventurers thank you and then we have a couple of changes Wanda valkyrie fixed an issue with the character would move abnormally in certain situations after using shield chase Oh, I kind of like that. I think I had that issue. Um, and then Wizard. Improved the movement of Wizards after using the Hellfire skill. Other character changes, or other changes, you can now change your skill points freely up to level 56. After that, you'll need to use a Secret Book of Old Moon or the Armstrong skill guide. The cost of recovering all mounts, HP, repair, and stamina was changed from 15 to 500 silver per 1%. Okay, PlayStation Cam and Sylvia Content Edition, New Magic Crystals. So this is all the new magical crystals and what they do in the game. We've had them on Xbox, but now PlayStation gets them, which is nice. I believe um, these attack speed ones, This I think the Bond Magic Viper Crystal is one of the best, even though the accuracy is not as good as the Jin. But I think the Jin and the Bond, the, these... These Jin, Bon, and Wan Magic Crystals uh, for Viper, I believe those are the three best. I may be wrong, but I believe those are the three best. Treasure Poachers with Akama Sylvia recently opening its borders. Some degenerates have decided that this is a perfect time to start smuggling rare treasures out of the region to sell elsewhere. These poachers will be carrying rare goods and seeds in chests as they attempt to cross the border into Calfion. Queen Brolina has declared that if you manage to stop these poachers, you will get to keep the goods contained. Treasure poachers will appear randomly around the Camus Sylvia region. Once defeated, they will drop their treasure chest that needs to be broken for the goods inside to be yours. If the treasure chest is not broken within two minutes, it will disappear. New scroll bosses and items. Camus is filled with danger and nothing more dangerous than the new world bosses. So Uragon, Ahab, Ahib, Griffin, and Often Tet. We already went over Often Tet. Don't really need to go over these two. I mean, they add... Uragon Shoes, Griffin's Helmet, and Often Tet's Light Sealed Weapon Box. Altar of Training. Kamasilvia is a region steeped in tradition. One of these traditions is the coming of age ceremony of these descended from the goddess Sylvia. The descendants from small groups and complete challenging trials from the right to move the, to adulthood as part of the Kamasilvian cultural heritage experience. Any adventurer brave enough to try 
will be able to try out this experience. There are three ways to activate the altar of training. Each of these messages will require you to reach first reach level 58. The first is through the Campus Sylvia main quest. During the main quest, you'll be able to accept NPC Milford's co-op Proof of Courage quest. After accepting quest, talk to Milford one more time and spend 10 energy to receive the item. Whew. Voltara Introductory Training Manual. The quest is available once per character. Second method can be retreated every three days. You'll have to spend 100 energy. You'll retrieve the training manual pretty much. Last method is a weekly quest. You can do it once a week, and you'll do the same thing. <laughs> once you have the item, you need to head to the Altar of Training, which is north of the Mansion Forest. Once a party leader activates the item, a short message will appear telling adventurers to prepare for the incoming trials. This is when the first stage of the event will take place. To complete the challenge, you will need to defeat Sacrament, and if its HP is depleted, you will fail this training. You have failed this training. There are five stages which begin one after the other. There is time limited to adhere here. And surviving one stage by having too many monsters left over will result in the second stage failing. Rewards for the altar of training are as follows. Whew. Introductory training manual, combat XP, contribution XP, and blackstone weapon armor. Training manual, combat XP, blackstone, armor weapon, hunter seal, and forest fury. And advanced training manual... Voltara Eclipsed Belt, Corsair Awakening Box, Blackstone Armor, Blackstone Weapon, Hunter's Seal, Forest Fury, Gold Ingot, Voltaron, Scattered Light Fragment, and whew, that is it. So Black Desert Plus World Boss Schedule Type Table added, Crossplay Related Functions added, UI, UX, and Improved, and Minor Bugs Changes. Holy crap, guys. We did it. Did not keep it under 35 minutes. We're at 40 this might be, this is definitely probably the longest, this is the longest update video I've ever made for you guys. And it will by far probably be the longest until we get some crazy addition into the game. But holy crap, I even didn't read stuff. This could have easily been like an hour and 20 minute update video. It's just insane. But as always, I will leave this link right up here in the description for you guys. Feel free to come over here, check it out, and uh, read anything that I didn't read for you, um, and uh, check out some of the different stuff that maybe I didn't for thoroughly go in-depth with, just for time's sake. But, whew, I need to drink of water. I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. Check back later. There'll either be a Bless Unleashed video or that Sork doing Cliff's Weapon Box videos. One of those will be up later today. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys then. Peace. Cause when it's all over